Today we've got a crazy revenge of getting a friend's license shut down and suspended. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, younger brother snitches on me, so I shaved his eyebrows. If you're the oldest kid, or you live with a younger child, then you can most likely relate with my story. I'm not expecting you to relate with everything because my story is quite extreme, but the story goes out to all of you older kids. So as you know, adults are so blinded when it comes to younger siblings. Even my parents who were the harshest when I was younger have suddenly become the coolest parent. It was when my younger brother wanted to have a sleepover in our house and my parents let him. The next week I threw a small party and the little brat told on me. I got the punishment of my life but I didn't let him go scot free. When he was sleeping, I shaved his eyebrows and now he looks dumber than he did before. My name will be hidden but my brother's name is Calvin and he's now 12 years old. I'm 5 years older than him. We live with our parents who are still very much together, but my dad works on a college campus far away, so he's hardly at home. The only time when he comes home is when my mom has an issue. Sometimes she exaggerates problems with us and tells him. He is feared by me and my brother. Frankly, the only of our parents that I fear. My mom tries to threaten me time and time again, but the only person who can really get me terrified around the house is my father. No, he doesn't abuse me or my brother. He's quite respectable and uses only legal means to punish either me or Calvin. But he's stern. As a college professor, he knows how best to penalize his sons because he understands what we like and what he could take away from us that would hurt us the most. It wasn't like I got many privileges anyway. In other words, he was my mother's superpower. When she needed things done, she threatened us with our father and when we didn't do it, she made it a big deal. Still, I'm much more free with her. My mother can be kind and soft sometimes. We can still hug and peck her even until now. But my dad, no way. We cannot even watch TV with him. It was either we had some schoolwork to do or house chores to help out with. He's mostly out of touch with his kids, but I'll not have it any other way. So here's the story. My brother came back from school one day and randomly told me that he wanted to have a sleepover party. He was going to tell mom. I laughed at him. When I was his age, our mom never let me have friends over, talk less of a party through the night. It was ridiculous to even think of. I thought she wouldn't let him, and I told him. But he decided to try to ask anyway. I let him. To think that the only reason why he was even throwing a party in the first place was that he wanted to get back at a classmate who hosted a sleepover party without inviting him. If I was Calvin, I would have left that part out when telling mom, but he didn't. I expected her face to turn pale and then red before she scolded him for wanting to show off. Then she was supposed to get talking about how expensive it was to host a party, how she cannot trust other kids in her home, and how he was supposed to be engaging his time with other things like math competitions or science fairs rather than sleepovers, which was funny because even when I wanted some of my guys to come over to study with me during the weekend, she told me that I didn't need to read with people and I had a phone so that I could contact them if I needed anything. She didn't let me go to their houses to study either. It was annoying because her excuse for not letting me go out with friends was that I needed to study and whenever I actually wanted to study, her outrageous rules stopped me. I'm sure by now you can tell that my mom is paranoid. She has over the top rules. When I was younger, I used to wish I had other parents, but now I've gotten used to her methods and I'm quite hardy to them. Being five years older than my younger brother, I got to experience so many things before him. I watched my parents grow soft when he started getting older. It was annoying to see them let him go for outings, even from the age of 10. Most times I would have to take him there no matter how much I whined. Calvin became a spoiled brat because of that. Things I did that got my video games confiscated by my dad were now being overlooked for Calvin. The worst thing was that even when I had to watch my mom compromise her standards for my little brother, she still never let her guard down with me. I don't know what I did. Maybe it's just the fact that I'm in my late teens and she suspects I could become wayward. She still keeps the imaginary leash around my neck very tight. I still can't have friends over because she doesn't trust teenage boys. Obviously girls aren't allowed either. I can't hang out with friends because she doesn't trust me and many things like that. Another reason might be because I'm the first child. She said it more than once that I'm supposed to be the responsible one, the family leader when my dad passed. I'm supposed to be responsible and set a trend for my little brother. My father tells me that he's training me to be the man of the house. Maybe that's why they're stricter on me than on Calvin. 
Back to when Calvin asked my mom, she even shared in his anger that he wasn't invited to the other sleepover. Yep, that's when I knew I was either losing it or my mother had actually become nicer. She became determined to throw an even better sleepover party so that all the children in Calvin's class would talk about it for a while. She went as far as working with him to find out what the other party had, the games they played and so on, so that she could do more than that. When Calvin's classmates heard of what his party had, given that they'd already enjoyed the other one, they were all very excited to attend. My mother wisely spaced the time between the two sleepovers so that the other mothers would let their kids sleep away from their house. So it wasn't immediately after the other sleepover, but the next month, and the planning was immaculate, properly structured down to the last bit. The sleepover was a success to say the least. Children started showing up around 6 p.m. It was a Friday night, so parents were even glad to have their kids sleep out of the house. I lost count of the number of boys that were there that day. All I remember was that at some point, I had to leave the entire living room to them, where my mom served them homemade cookies with milk. Once I got upstairs, I started talking to my friends about coming over sometime. They were shocked because I never invited them, or if they asked to come by, I always refused. But this time I told them that my mom had gone soft and started to lax her rules. Honestly, I wasn't revolting or being rebellious. I just thought that since Calvin should host a party, I could have some of my friends over. And I wasn't even going to bother my mom with it. I didn't need her to bake cookies or cook dinners for them. We could buy our bags of food and have fun by ourselves. And I picked a day that she wasn't going to be around. Not because I thought I was doing anything wrong but because I didn't want to bother her with our noise or anything. I also didn't want them to be bothered by her presence, so I fixed the day on when she went over to my dad's place to drop some provisions and groceries that she picked up. They were ready by then and I had four friends over. One of them brought his girlfriend and I was cool with it. We played music, played games, and ate snacks. That was basically all. I remember telling Calvin to go to his room that I didn't want him to be around because we were talking PG stuff. I guess this is why he got offended and waited to tell me because I wouldn't let him have some fun with us. I don't know why he would think that I would let him hang out with us when he had his own babyish sleepover party and I didn't interfere. The entitlement of little brothers can be so enraging. If Calvin doesn't get the bigger chicken in the stew, he throws a tantrum. His bad behavior is encouraged by my mom that he never wants to change. So I had my little party up in my room. Someone brought a Bluetooth speaker so we could play music out loud to drown out our voices. When they left, I changed into my night clothes, set dinner for myself and Calvin. We watched TV and then went to bed. He didn't even act annoyed or angry at that time. Calvin was still talking to me normally and I talked to him normally. I thought we were cool. It was until my mom came back. He didn't even help her to bring her things in yet. He just jumped right into it and told her I had friends over. I was coming down from the stairs when I heard him. My mom looked at me and I just froze there. She asked me if it was true and I said yes. We just hung out in my room and it was nothing big. Calvin said it wasn't a small thing. It was a party and there was music and they wouldn't let him in. My mother went silent on me and told me how I betrayed her trust. Apparently I defied her rules and my dad was coming back home to deal with me. I was bothered and I lived the rest of the week afraid that during the weekend, I was going to get the punishment of a lifetime, but I didn't let my brother go scot-free. I made sure he knew that I was angry with him and that it wasn't cool to talk to me. I didn't help him when things were beyond his reach or with his homework or anything at all. Anything he didn't know how to operate, he didn't use for that whole week because I would not help him. Only if my mom did. Finally, the weekend came and my dad sent a message to my mom that they had an impromptu staff union meeting in the school and he couldn't make it home. The dread cleared slowly until it was almost forgotten that I did anything wrong. My mom just seized my games, but she couldn't take my phone because I needed that for school. I still never got punished by my dad because the gravity of the offense just kind of phased out. I still didn't talk to Calvin. He was a traitor and he deserved it. One day when my mom was not home, Calvin came to beg me to play with him. He's older than me, but considering that we're always the only ones at home, we had to be okay with each other. But I had a phone and he didn't, so I told him no, that I would never be okay with him again for what he did. He cried and begged, but I just ignored him. 
As he kept on crying, I decided to strike a deal with him. For payback, I had to shave off his eyebrows. And when mom comes back, he wouldn't say that I did it, but that he did it himself. If he could not do that, then I'll never talk to him again. He kept on crying and I kept on ignoring until he finally gave in. I got my razor and smoothly cleaned out his eyebrows. He has no hair left on his forehead. Calvin looked even dumber than he did before. He ran upstairs to check the mirror and I heard him scream, but I reminded him that mom could not find out that I did it. And she didn't. She was horrified when she saw his face and Calvin had to lie that he was just experimenting with sharp objects. He got scolded and I just enjoyed myself. My mom wanted to turn the situation around and blame me, but I reminded her that she always let him do what he wanted and I couldn't, so I didn't stop him. It was then that my mom realized her mistakes. She apologized for not making things fair between both of us around the house. From then on, she promised to give equal opportunities and that I could even throw a party and she would like to help. I told her that I didn't want compensation and if I wanted, she was not allowed to help. Well, that did it. Every day she was trying to make things right between me and her, while Calvin struggled with his self-confidence after looking like a clown, served him right. I know things got done for me and he was just another kid. Then the best news came. My mom called us one day and told us she had very important news. She was having another kid. I hoped it was going to be a girl because I wanted a younger sister so bad. I was happy, but Calvin was not. Maybe he just recognized that once a new baby arrives, there will be no special treat for him. It made sense that he knew he had those privileges before, and he intentionally used them. My mom gave birth to the prettiest little girl and now she has all our attention including mine, my mom, and my dad's. Everyone loves her, Stephanie. Everyone except Calvin, but nobody cares. She now had all the attention and it feels much better than when Calvin had it. I think this is a very real phenomenon where the first kid is always going to be treated a little bit more strict than the second one. I mean, even if you just have to boil it down to simply, you're the first go around, they're just trying to figure out their way through life as parents. They're trying to steer you in the right direction and they don't want anything too crazy going on. You know, just by the time they get to the second kid, if the kid's a little bit younger, you know, maybe they just have a little bit more ease of comfort in giving them a little bit more, which sadly seems unfair. That said, our next story is, I applied for my friend's license to be suspended. My best friend and I are okay and are back to being friends now, but in the past, we had a big issue that nearly ruined our friendship totally. It was at that point that I managed to influence getting her therapist license suspended. My best friend and I became friends in college, but the first time I met her was when she came to my high school as a transfer student. She was one of the brilliant girls who cared deeply about books and had straight A's. I, on the other hand, was more interested in makeup, fashion, and being recognized as the most beautiful girl in school. Yes, I was the stereotypical shallow cheerleader in school. I was never mean though, I just cared a lot about stuff that wasn't so deep and had superficial values. My best friend and I were not friends in high school though. We were paired once to work on a project together by our biology teacher, and we had some conversations centering on the project. She carried the project anyway, and I was happy about that. It wasn't unusual to have the brilliant folks in school do the assignment alone. Some people found that insulting, but I considered it a relief. Who wants to work on some boring assignment rather than spend a full day in their room trying on different shades of lipstick and seeing what goes with what? Well, not me. Not long after our shared class assignment, I noticed that I had stopped seeing her in school and figured she probably transferred to a different school. In college, my best friend and I met again, and I went over to say hi. It was college, I was schooling very far from home, and none of my friends were interested in going to college, and had gone away to pursue a career in acting and modeling. I however had to get a degree because my parents were very insistent on it. My parents are both professors at the same university, and my two sisters have master's degrees. They now own doctorate degrees. It was nearly impossible for me to refuse to go to college. My parents would never have heard of it. I don't care if you don't have A's in all your courses, you must have a degree. My mom would say whenever I tried to suggest that she considers that there's more to life than owning a degree. Well, I went off to college, determined to do well. I knew I couldn't do as well as my sisters, but I was going to at least try. 
When I saw my ex-classmate in a crowd after orientation, I was excited. I waved at her and she waved back. Emboldened by her friendly countenance, I went over to say hi. We were inseparable after that. In our second year, we moved in together, and while she was always busy with studying, I had made sure she had food to eat and provided all the entertainment. I did some studying too, but I'm going to be honest and admit that studying was not a priority for me in college. Naturally, our personalities mixed and I became more reserved, while she became a lot more outgoing than she used to be. Her dad was in the army and her mother died while she was in the same school as me. That was why she moved away and I didn't see her again. She moved in with her aunt, who wasn't exactly nice to her and she lived with this aunt and her family until she went off to college. My friend was reserved mostly because she grew up in a conservative family. Her dad was hardly ever around and even when he was, he never wanted to be around her mother so the family was never close. Her mother had cheated on her dad while he was away, and her dad found out about it. He promised to have forgiven her, but he never moved past it till she died. After her mom died, her dad probably hated the whole situation and started to have issues. He blamed himself for not forgiving his wife, and blamed himself for her death. He blamed his daughter, he blamed everyone, and hated everyone. When he decided that my friend being around him may hurt her, he spoke to his sister about his daughter moving in with him and she agreed. According to what my best friend told me, her aunt treated her badly when she lived with her. She would yell at her and make her do most of the chores. She had no friends, so she turned to her book. My friend just wanted to be a doctor and never have to bother anyone again. We were friends for the first three years without having any issues, but I soon suspected that my friend may be jealous of me. I noticed how irritable she became whenever I went out and returned home with my college boyfriend and how she acted whenever we all went out and my boyfriend was showing PDA. I was too scared to confront her about it, and in some way I understood why she may have been mad. She never had an actual relationship, but I had had too many relationships and even had more guys trying to get me to date them. Whenever we went out together, more guys would walk up to me, buy me drinks, or try to get my attention. She hardly got attention from guys, and the reason was a no-brainer. She was never interested in dressing up or looking good. I understand the importance of being confident in who you are and what your lifestyle choices are, but she wanted to be like me but was very uninterested in putting in the work. She ate whatever and would even mock me for being too careful, but my carefulness was how I was able to get my college boyfriend in the first place. Aside from the tiny bits of jealousy that I noticed, my best friend was a fantastic friend. So as soon as we were done with college, we moved in together again. This time the jealousy thing had gotten worse because my friend didn't have a job and I had managed to get a job. Not only did she not have a job at the time, she was also still single. I on the other hand was in a relationship with a guy who was doing well for himself at the time and I had a well paying job too. As any good friend would, I picked up the tabs many times and even covered rent too. It only made sense since my friend was still struggling to stand on her feet. However, what I got in return was her being triggered over every little thing. If I mentioned the slightest thing, she would take offense and accuse me of treating her in a certain way because I paid most of our bills. It was more annoying because she was a psychotherapist and had experience counseling others. One would think that she would see that it was her insecurity speaking. I think she knew what was going on with her, but was doing whatever anyway. I could only tolerate her behavior for so long, so one day I snapped. I told her I didn't want to be friends with her anymore and mentioned that she was insecure. While it hurt her at first, she eventually realized I was right and she apologized. Luckily for us both, she and her colleagues from college decided to start a firm-like therapy partnership where they partnered as doctors to take in clients. Their firm took off and they soon had clients coming in for them. Everything was great again but I continued to notice microaggression and jealousy coming from my friend. I chose to look away and just focus on her good sides because no one was perfect anyway. Months into her job, she got a boyfriend, a dude that was a couple of years older. She never officially introduced us, they just sneaked around the house like teenagers. Of course, it didn't make sense to me what she was doing. I was very open and real about my romantic relationships but I didn't have a problem with it still. If anything, I was glad that she finally had someone. One day she stayed back at home and didn't go to work. I asked several times what was going on, but she refused to reply to me. 
Eventually, she promised she'd tell me when I returned from work. When I returned, she told me that her boyfriend was back with his wife. It turned out that her boyfriend was married, hence the sneaking around. She insisted that he wasn't married and was only separated from his wife, but eventually admitted that he promised to leave his wife for her. When I asked her where they met, she ignored me. After her breakup, she started seeing someone else, a college student. They had a very turbulent relationship and were always fighting. Almost five months after they started their relationship, they broke up. My friend was devastated. She cried all night and was hardly sleeping. One day, I heard her crying and went into her room. She asked if my boyfriend was okay with me staying with her, and I said yes. My boyfriend was in our home that night, but we heard her sobbing and he was uncomfortable. We talked about the guy, and it was in our conversation that she mentioned that he was her client. The married man she was with was her client too. I noticed that she had a pattern of establishing romantic relationships with men she pitied, and I was surprised that she wasn't seeing what I was. I pointed it out to her, and she agreed that I was right. Do you want to talk to someone? She said, at work? I don't know about that. No, it doesn't have to be someone who works in your firm. It probably shouldn't even be. She nodded and we went back to sleep. A month after our conversation, I noticed a new guy was coming around the house. Somehow I never saw him, but I heard him speak many times. I was in my room one afternoon when I heard him tell her he would like to apply to speak to a different therapist. You can't do that, I heard my friend say firmly. Why not? Because then you may have to explain why. He said, I don't have to. It was stated in the forms. I only have to fill out an application. Well, the others would suspect that something was going on and I don't want that happening. I was shocked that my friend was hooking up with another client. Aside from me being protective of her and not wanting her to put her career in jeopardy, I was quite disappointed that she, of all people, would do something like that and continuously too. I used to see my best friend as a smart woman who knew what she was doing, but her behavioral pattern was off-putting. I decided to talk to her about it, but she got very pissed. Is that what we do now? Eavesdrop on others' conversation? She asked. No, I would never eavesdrop on your conversations. I just wanted to warn you about this. You promised that you were going to talk to someone. She said, I'm handling it. Honey, you know I'm only concerned because I... I'm handling it, she yelled, left for her room and slammed the door behind her. After that conversation, I never heard his voice again so I assumed they stopped seeing each other. On the day my best friend tried to seduce my man, I was working late at the office. My boyfriend and I had planned to have dinner together in my house and I was going to cook. When I told him that I might be coming home later, he said it was okay and that he'd wait for me at home. Some minutes later, I get a text from my boyfriend. Your friend is acting strange around me. Is something going on? By acting strange, I thought he meant that she was being cold so I told him to ignore her and that we'd talk when I return. My friend had been acting cold towards me too, so I just figured she extended the attitude to my boyfriend. He texted me again to ask that I return quickly. I'm going to lie down in your room, his text read. I ignored it. Men can be quite impatient and I wasn't ready to deal with him in the middle of a hectic evening at work. Two hours later I picked up stuff and left for the house. Since he had told me that he was going to lie down in my bedroom, I just went straight to the bedroom and was met with the scariest thing I had ever witnessed. My best friend was stark naked in my bedroom and climbing on my fully clad boyfriend who was struggling to push her away. I screamed when I saw her and she jumped off the bed and ran to her bedroom. My boyfriend tried to tell me what she was about to do, but I told him to hush. I had seen with my eyes that she was trying to force herself on him. That evening, my man and I packed a few of my things and I spent the night with him. My best friend texted, called, and even sent emails many times asking me to forgive her, but I never replied to them. I eventually went to the house and packed all of my stuff and got a new place. I would randomly think of my friend's betrayal and have a sour day, so I decided that I was going to get revenge. I sent her firm several emails telling them that she had a track record of having affairs with her clients. I also sent written letters to the board telling them about her misconduct. My boyfriend and I had already moved out of that city when I got an email from her. I was suspended. I know you did it. You are evil, it read. I smiled. I was definitely happy that she got suspended. 
I blocked her from calling me and we didn't communicate until years later when I saw her at an event and we started talking again. It took time but we were able to rebuild trust and put the past behind us. My boyfriend, now husband, is still skeptical of our friendship though but I know that she's changed and is no longer who she used to be. She did get help when she got suspended and was able to unpack all that was bothering her so she's in a much better place now. There definitely seemed to be some deep-seated issues going on here. I mean, the way she was acting out, the way she was latching onto people who were opening up to her in a field where she's lucky that she can even keep working after that. I mean, forcing herself on other people. I'm glad that after all of this happened, they finally went and got the help they needed. Just definitely some deep stuff going on there. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another crazy revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.